So I haven't been around for a while, and I apologize. It's um, not my fault. <laughs> I've wanted to make videos and talk to you guys, but I got a community guideline strike. Um, I've got one day left, so hopefully I'll be live streaming Thursday. And this video may be longer. If you get bored, skip to the, I'm going to put it in the notes of where the end is of what time there's something you really need to see at the end so if you're not interested in what i have to say then at least check the comments or show notes or whatever they call it and skip over i'll put it in there and you can look at that but i got a community guideline strike i got a warning in may this was the couple that went on a hunger strike and i just reposted it with a little bit of commentary and i got an impersonation thing appeal rejected is America waking? This was the guy who stood in front of the city council in California. And I just commented a little bit, and then I played it, and I got an impersonation again. I don't know what the hell this is. I went through it, read it, made appeals. Appeals rejected, of course. If it happens again, you won't hear from me for two weeks. And that doesn't expire till November 25th, day after Thanksgiving or whatever, or somewhere around there. But the, the reason I wanted to make this video if I get to do it, put it back up, things have been happening since we've talked. And some of those things are what happens when you get a community guideline strike. So let's look at the analytics real quickly. I have a small channel. I appreciate everybody that comes here. You guys are great. You leave great comments, smart things. When you make a video, you get some views and you get some views and you get some views. And you get a couple hundred views, 300 couple hundred there and then when you get a community guideline strike you get none so I mean people are still watching some things which I appreciate there's nothing new which is kind of bummer but what's been happening since we talked last is this really fantastic thing the CDC put out six percent of the deaths were only mentioned as a cause from coronavirus 19 I'm not calling it this thing anymore because when you do, you're misleading people. It's a coronavirus, coronavirus disease. It's a cold. It's 6% of the deaths were just that. So they take this number of all the people who have died and then they take out all the other underlying causes, comorbidities they call them, and you come up with 6%. So that was pretty interesting. What I did find equally as interesting was... Um, the way the media is spinning it. So there's an article. No COVID deaths are only 6% of what's documented. And they call it a stunningly wrong statistic being a passed around. It's not. They're, they go into the nonsense about what the doctor puts as a cause of death. Well, hospitals were getting paid. You guys know this. Big money to say people had COVID and put them on a respirator. Buy your tax dollars through the government's. So, of course, they put COVID, and then they put liver disease and kidney disease and um, lung disease, and then the person was 93 or 82 or whatever. So there's a lot of propaganda trying to debunk the fact that uh, the coronavirus isn't wiping out the world. You know what they're doing. They're wiping out the world on purpose. Um, that's the other thing I was going to talk about before we go to the next thing. The meme or mental image that people have about what's happening under the cover of COVID is starting to break out of the echo chamber. So the channels that you guys listen to and the ones I go to were kind of an echo chamber. Pardon me, to a big degree. Dang, sneezes. Um... If you go to Quantum of Conscious, if you go to SGT Report, if you go to the Crow House, we all kind of talk about similar things and we have similar thinking. But I've noticed over the past three or four days that the cashless society, the Western economic takedown, the takedown of the U.S., the communist takeover is kind of seek it, seeping out of that echo chamber. And even some mainstream uh, media people are talking about some aspects of that so I think that's really interesting and I think as we go forward more people are going to see what we a lot of us believe a lot of us believe COVID coronavirus is a cover for other agendas and we're starting to kind of it's all kind of con coalescing 
into it, all the people that have talked about this for 10 years or 12 years or 40 years, like Jordan Maxwell and um, Myron Fagan back in the day. Look up Myron Fagan if you haven't heard any of his lectures from the uh, 60s and early 70s. He talks about a communist takeover of the entire world, which seems to be what we're kind of working with. And the powers that be have the technology now to do it. If he'd have known the technology that we were going to have, or any of the guys in the 80s and 90s, they'd say, okay, there's the that's the nail in the coffin right there. So we're kind of going through that. Um, the next thing I want to share with you, Colorado Speedway holds a Stop the COVID Chaos event after flouting coronavirus orders. So this Speedway in Colorado understands that there's an unconstitutionality to things, but they're going to be fighting it in an administrative court. So I don't think they're going to win. On Tuesday, Michelle Malkin, um, Tim, not Tim Neville, maybe Tim Neville. I don't know. No, that's not Tim Neville. Another guy, a state senator. They all gathered at this speedway and they had like, I don't know, three or 4,000 people. And they played patriotic songs and they gave speeches about the Constitution. Then they called Michelle Malkin a right-wing activist, which kind of cracks me up because... She's just a person who can see through the nonsense. And they're suing Jefferson County, the county the Speedway's in. And Michelle Malkin's, somebody else is suing the governor. And I, you know, like I say, it's an administrative court, so I don't know what's going to happen. But they had the huevos to bring people together that apparently, in violation of the orders, I thought this was pretty interesting. This hasn't really gone viral, even though all the mainstream has picked it up. NBC News, it was in the Washington Examiner, it was in a lot of uh, online newspapers. So I thought that was something to share. And finally, at the 7.06 mark, the thing that I did, that I just had to do it, because I think a lot of people want it, but mostly I wanted it so I could wear it, is I made a t-shirt at the Teespring store. And, I don't know, it's $24. Um... We get a little bit of that, but that's not the point. It's not for the money. I'm not going to have a big store, and I'm not going to pimp merchandise and stuff. I just had to make a T-shirt that I could wear into a business so when people give me grief about their mask, I can just point to it and keep walking. I'm not even going to give them the time of day. It says medically exempt. Thank you. And I think it's kind of nice and kind of smart, assy at the same time. So I really like the idea of this. And it comes in red. Red's pretty good, but red doesn't look good on me. And black. And if there's any interest, if, if you guys drop it in the comments, if you want like girl tees or um, tank tops or anything else, tell me. I'm not very good at making this, so it took me a long time to do this. Um, but I will do it if you guys want it. I, I hope you don't. I hope you just want to buy a t-shirt. and Or you don't even want to buy a t-shirt. You want to make a t-shirt to buy for yourself. Go over to Teespring. It's super easy. It took me a long time because I'm not really good at graphics, but... Uh, that's what I wanted to share with you guys. And if you're still here with me and this gets posted, I will be doing a live stream Thursday night, 9.30 Eastern, 7.30 Mountain Time, which is my time zone. For my friends who are listening over on the other side of the Atlantic, I know it's too early. One of these days when I'm off work, I'll do an early one so it's during your prime time because I know I, I, I like a lot of you people who watch this. So anyway, after all of that, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, you know I love to hear them. I'm trying to respond. I haven't been able to respond to a lot of them because I've been in YouTube timeout, grounded by YouTube. Hopefully that changes soon, and hopefully I don't get another copyright strike. But um, I guess that's it. Thanks again.